Hello all, welcome back to Zoological Point. My name is Kyle, and today we'll be taking a closer look at the most peculiar raptor of sub-Saharan Africa, the secretary bird. <laughs> well, where do we begin? Secretary birds actually aren't secretaries, mostly because they don't schedule meetings or answer phones. I'm sorry, I had to. I swear that's the last secretary pun in this episode. Anywho, secretary birds are large members of the birds of prey family. Their closest cousins are eagles, hawks, and vultures, even though I personally think they just look like a psychopathic Egyptian vulture on stilts. Despite having cousins, secretary birds are the only member of their family, and they are extremely unique and have lots of interesting adaptations to help them master the hunt over the plains of Africa. First and foremost, their legs, which allow them to stand at over four feet tall, making them the world's tallest bird of prey. They use their legs, as most animals do, to move around, but unlike most animals, they will use them to murder their dinner. That's right, secretaries stomp their prey to death. This is probably a good time to point out how extraordinarily sharp their talons are. It's basically like getting stepped on by multiple steak knives at the same time. Very fun! Their diet consists of large insects, small mammals, lizards, eggs, and even venomous snakes. Now you may be wondering, how does an overgrown osprey hunt down some of the world's deadliest reptiles? Sacred again is in the legs. Notice how the feathers on the leg don't go all the way down to the foot. The scaly knees aren't just an homage to their dinosaur forefathers, but a rather cunning survival strategy. You see, these scales make a makeshift shield that protect the bird from snake bites. These scales and their unusually serpentine diet has led them to earn the nickname, the Serpent Bird. Speaking of names, why are they called secretaries? Well, the first explorers that discovered them thought that their bizarre-looking feathers on the back of their head looked like the quill pens of old English secretaries. Friendly reminder that old-timey naturalists were crazy and didn't know what they were talking about. There are so many cooler alternative names. I mean, some reasons even call them hunter birds. But we're stuck with secretary. Oi. Another thing that separates them from their predatory peers is their lifestyle. Rather than the high-altitude soaring raptors that most people envision when they hear the term bird of prey, secretaries prefer to strut their stuff all over the savannah. Even though they can fly, they prefer to walk about the plains, looking for their next meal. Switching things up to talk about the bit more romantic side of these hunters, the secretary bird is a monogamous species, meaning that pairs will mate for life. Well, most will. However, I will note that divorces among secretary birds are significantly lower than that of humans, mostly because they don't have a judicial system. They're birds. <laughs> Anywho, to raise their chicks, mom and dad construct a nest in the treetops that usually consists of grass, wool, and various forms of fecal matter from Africa's megafauna. It may sting to high heaven, but that really doesn't affect an animal that has no sense of smell. In fact, only a few types of birds can actually smell, including kiwis, parrots, and the related vulture. Unlike most raptors, secretaries usually raise more than one chick, often two or three. And might I add that baby secretaries are one of the cutest birds on the planet. These birds are truly incredible, and I hope you've learned something new today. That's all for this episode. I'm apologizing for the short video, but it's because I have something very big that's coming soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Subscribe if you're inclined, and I'll see you in the next Thank okay. you.